a really terrific uh, is regular columnist for Laugh Saf magazine, this sort of cool thing for all the comedians. And we just found out he has signed a contract for his first book, uh, a collection of his columns from there. Let's welcome Mr. Pat Oates. I, uh, I recently lost 63 pounds. Um, no, thank you, but it's not the thing you should clap for. I recently ran into an ex-girlfriend and she gained 48 pounds. And that's the greatest feeling of all times. Oh, it's so great. We now both weigh in the 170s. It's incredible. We used to fight and now we're in the same fight class. It's crazy. I'm happy. I look out here, I see some old people and that makes me happy. Young comics get afraid of that. There's the one thing comics get afraid of more than anyone else in a crowd, old people. It makes no sense because they, they don't think they're going to get their jokes. You know what I mean? They look, they go, Pat, I can't tell my sex jokes. Old people don't know about sex. It's like, who do you think invented the stuff that you do right now? Just because you call it a rusty trombone, grandma called it Tuesday, you know what I mean? I mean, just because they're melting candle versions of real humans does not mean they don't understand. It's, it's a weird thing. I think it's because we, look at our, we never look at our grandparents as sexual beings, or even beings. We just look at them as just old things that we know that might die. And we shouldn't do that. Next time you're at a holiday, you know, look over at grandma and just think about how many men she's gone down on in her life. You know what I mean? How do you think you got here? A handshake and a smile? <laughs> Nana was a giver. You know what I mean? <laughs> Why do you think she had those mints in her purse? Anyway, oh, did I ruin your memories? It's fun. I think about old people all the time. I think about, I think, I think about death a lot. That's because I do comedy and I see a lot of couples and couples make me think of death. Um, only because couples, the more married you are, the more you plan for that. If you guys were a couple and you're younger, you're thinking about what you're going to do tomorrow. If you're married 30 years, you already bought a plot for where you're going to be. It's, it's a weird thing we've progressed to, you know? And I never understood it. I never understood. Couples always get caskets. That's like a thing. They always get caskets together. And that's an odd thing because you guys don't look comfortable that close alive. Why would you want to get that close dead? It, it, it's, a, it's an odd thing. I'm not a farmer or a scientist but I'm pretty sure we're the best fertilizer there is, so I don't know why we put us in a box in the ground. I mean, I think the, be the best move would be just to throw us in the ground and see what grows up, you know? I throw you in the ground, maybe a bag of Cheetos grows, I don't know. I did that joke once and a guy said, I want to be Cool Ranch Doritos. I was like, you be whatever white trash treat you want to be, sir, it's fine. Be Funyuns, that's fine, whatever you want. I don't get that one, I don't get the, uh, I don't get the cremation. I don't understand. That's a weird conversation we have with a loved one. It's like, when you're gone, we're going to burn you and put you in a vase. It's like, ah, can you try to keep me alive first? That'd be really nice. And I have two kids. I don't want them to go on some weird noble quest when I die. You know what I mean? I don't want them to think, like, I think dad liked that pond. Then they go out in a boat and they're ruining another family's kayaking weekend in the process. And they're salt and peppering trout with my remains. You know what I mean? I think I want to be a mummy. I think it's what I want. Yeah, because mummies are fun, right? Funeral, not fun. Even though the word funny, real, no, not at all. They are not fun. Being a mummy is a great time. Ever been to a funeral? It's a bummer. You know what I mean? There's a box. There's a guy in there. He's not alive. It's terrible. Go to mine. There's no box. I'm just wrapped up like a blunt in the corner, and it's amazing. You ever been to a funeral? Receiving line, right? Sorry for your loss. Sorry for your loss. You go to mine, they give you a Sharpie, you sign them like a cast. It's fantastic. <laughs> Write whatever you want. See you next summer. I don't care. I won't see it. And funerals are expensive, right? Real expensive. Being a mummy is not expensive. When it's over, my kids just take me, put me in the car, drive me to a haunted house, drop me off. I have a job now. It's fine. Here's what I hope happens when I die. When I die, I hope someone just takes me and throws me in the ground. No box, no nothing, just like a seed. I hope a flower grows out of my chest. I, ho I hope a guy picks that flower, gives it to a woman, she blows him on the best wingman ever. That's what I believe in. Those are my beliefs. A lot of couples don't get that joke because they forgot what blowjobs were. But I think about funerals too much because I think we plan them. Um, we plan funerals harder than we plan birthdays. And it's weird. We celebrate death more than we celebrate life. And we should reverse that because a funeral, if you just look at it from the outside, could be a great birthday. Stay with me. Imagine it's your birthday, okay? You wake up, you open the window, and outside is a line of cars, and they're all there for you. The last one looks like a limo, but it has a hatchback to it, if you will. You walk downstairs, and six of your best friends standing in rows of three are standing there waiting for you. 
in between them is like, I guess you call it a portable bed. It's got handles and cushions and a roof in case it rains because nobody should have to walk on their birthday. You know what I mean? You lay down, they pick you up, they carry you out to the limo and slide you in. And I know what you're thinking, Pat, I don't know where we're going, but I don't like traffic. Well, don't worry. There's no traffic on your birthday. <laughs> the cops leading the procession line, you're going to run all the lights. It's your big day. And it's great. People just give you flowers for no reason. You get a makeover. It's a mortician makeover. But it's still a thing. It's nice. They, they drive you off to this awesome building for your birthday. It's incredible. There's stained glass windows. There's bell ringing. R. Kelly's leading the choir. It's amazing. Your friends pull you out. They carry you like Caesar. You float over everybody's heads. Your exes are looking at you like, he looks great. It's like, yeah, I do. And you float over their heads. It's amazing. And then they bring you into this building, and everyone you know is there, and they're all dressed wonderfully. It's like family and friends and people used to fuck. They're all there. It's fantastic. And they carry you up to the front, and they put you down right in the front, right next to your best selfie of the year. It's framed up real nice. You look fantastic. And then your loved ones come up one by one and say amazing things about you to your face as you lay down eating chips or whatever. We are wasting that on dead people. That'd be the greatest birthday of all goddamn times. Use the applause rate, but that's all right. That's fine. I just blew your minds. I understand that. I do hope that one of you, I, I do hope that one of you does that and puts it on YouTube. And then I, you're, you're, I get to watch all that fun stuff, but I also get to see your grandmother who wasn't in on the joke. And she has a heart attack when she sees you supposedly be dead in the thing. And then your cheap uncle says, well, since we got all this stuff here anyway, let's have a two for one. So always leave them on a powerful note. Guys, my name is Pat Oates. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you so much, Pat. I, I had to go to a funeral last week. Just so you know. I was driving along. It's, 